everyone, Carissa here. Today I'm joining you from the lovely and windy Taos, New Mexico, here to join you in your practice um, in reverence and honor of this really beautiful, magical place. So go ahead and get ready and we'll jump right in. All right, everybody, we're gonna jump right in. So if you have your playlist queued up, you can go ahead and give it a start now, double clicking on that first song and then make your way onto a blanket for a nice seated position, cross-legged Sukhasana. And as you start to root down through your sits bones, you can let your hands fall right on top of the thighs. Take a nice roll of your shoulders up, back, and sliding down the spine, starting to lift the front of the heart, and close the eyes. So imagine the root of your spine, your sits bones, growing roots strong into the earth, helping to give you a sense of groundedness, a sense of strength, And as you start to bring your energy down into the earth, your root system starts to spread and it starts to call in different nutrients and water in and up to you. So as you disperse your energy into the ground, you're also calling in what is going to nourish and feed you, what is going to fuel you into your practice. So as you keep that vision in your mind's eye, you can start to breathe with nice cleansing breaths. So we'll start with a deep inhale, filling up from the root of your spine all the way up to the top of your lungs. And then exhale out through the mouth reversing that airflow. So we take a deep inhale through the nose, filling from the bottom up, and then we exhale out all the way, really releasing any stagnant energy from the bottom of the lungs, continuing on your own rhythm of breath, allowing yourself on your inhales to really lengthen through the roof, through the roof of your head, up the spine. So you're creating space along your spine. From that rooted place, you rise upward through the Shashumna channel, through all of the chakras, up to the heavens, connecting earth and sky. And if you're joining me from outdoors as well, perhaps you feel that lovely breeze on your skin, the sun on your face. And we'll take three more cycles of breath, just really capturing that sense of being, that fullness, that abundance that is coming your way. And at the end of that third cycle of breath, we'll go ahead and bring the palms together and then start to rub the palms together, generating a little bit of that heat and life force energy. And then letting the palms press into one another, we let the hands and that energy that we just brought into our palms rest right in front of the heart, thumbs to your sternum. And just noticing this sense of place, we'll go ahead and seal that all together with the sound of Om three times. Taking a deep inhale, a full exhale out to prepare, and inhale to chant. Om.
gently opening up the eyes, letting your hands return on top of your thighs. We'll take one more shoulder roll. <sighs> Recenter. Here we go. From this rooted and centered place, we'll go ahead and move any props out to the side and then come to lie flat on your back. And then we'll bring our legs to a tabletop position. Lovely. Go ahead and reach your arms up to the sky. And then with an exhale, draw your navel down towards the earth and allow your shoulders and chest to float. And we return. Taking an exhale to reach towards the sky. And inhale back down. So you can keep your legs in this 90 degree position or you can start to straighten the legs. Point the toes and reach and return. Reach and return. Option to add some foot and ankle mobility. As you exhale, you can point your toes as you reach. And then as you inhale, you flex the feet back and return to the earth. So inhale, really articulate through your feet and return down. Exhale, point. Inhale, flex back. One more round. Lovely. From here, we're going to bend our knees, hug them in towards our chest. Give yourself a nice squeeze. Maybe rock side to side to release the low back. And then we'll start to rock up and down the length of our spine to come to a seated pose. Great. From here, we'll prepare for our boat pose. So bringing the hands underneath the hamstrings, starting to roll the shoulders back onto the spine, and then really pull your navel in to support your back as you start to float your feet off of the mat. Great. So as your navel is pulling in, your heart continues to lift up. And when you squeeze your shoulder blades behind you, that helps to give some more support for your heart to lift. So as you breathe into the sides of your waist, you can start to play with maybe straightening the legs or releasing the hands. Maybe you bring it all together, or maybe you just keep your feet touching on the ground. Whatever version of boat pose works for you. We'll take one more deep breath. And exhale, hug it in and down. Go ahead and cross the ankles. We'll meet on all fours. Nice little tabletop position. Hips right over the knees, shoulders stack on top of the wrists. And we'll take some cat-cow poses. So we'll start to inhale, draw the heart through the shoulders, lift the gaze, lift the tailbone. And then with an exhale, draw the navel in and up lowering your head to look towards the navel. Another inhale, cow pose, really finding the edges of your spinal flexion. As you exhale, drop the head and arch the spine. So you can take this on your own rhythm of breath, synchronizing breath with your movement, allowing you to move and feel deeper. And then we'll take one last round. Coming back to our neutral spine and then just starting to do a little bit of a gaze over your left shoulder. You can start to move your weight into your left hip, gazing back behind you. You can feel a nice opening through the right side body. Coming back through center, more of a lateral movement, gazing over the right shoulder hips move over to the right as well. One more time to each side. Keeping the navel in. And returning to our neutral spine. We're going to tuck the toes. Awesome. And then start to hover the knees an inch or two off of the mat, continuing to hug the navel up and in. Slight round through the upper back. Deep inhale. 
exhale, push up and back, downward facing dog. You can pedal out the legs and feet. Especially after you've gone for a little bit of a hike, you can start to really press down through the heels, stretching out the calves and continuing to press nice and bright into your palms as you lift your hips. Maybe bend the knees if that helps. And then we'll come forward into our plank pose. Feel free to readjust your feet and hands. So your shoulders are stacked over your wrists, starting to engage your legs, kneecaps lift, head in line with the rest of your spine. Continue pressing through your hands. One more inhale. And then we exhale, lower the knees. This time we're going to place the knees nice and wide. So moving the knees out to the edges of the mat. And you can bring your big toes together and exhale as you press back into child's pose. In child's pose, you can let your head fall into the mat, into the earth. Allow your body to fully relax for a bit. And then on your next inhale, we'll come back up to this variation of all fours with the knees still wide. We'll take an inhale, lift the right arm up to the sky. And then exhale, thread your right hand underneath your left armpit and just reach as far as you can, taking a twist. And then inhale back up. Exhale, twist and reach. One more inhale to lift. Exhale, twist and reach as far as you can. And then you can let your arm and head come down to the ground. Nice. So as you let your right arm press into the ground, you can start taking a twist of the spine. Maybe you reach your left hand up and behind your back. Maybe you reach your left arm just straight in front, finding a twist. Your variation. This practice is always your own. I'm just here as a guide, so feel free to make it your own expression. From here, we'll bring the left hand back underneath the shoulder, pressing into it to come back up to neutral. Take an inhale, exhale, recenter. This time we inhale, lift the left arm up towards the sky. Exhale, thread. Inhale, reach. Exhale. Find that twist. Last round here. Exhale, reach. And then find a spot to land. Again, you can make this your own. Maybe finding another spot for your right hand in front of you. Maybe you come behind. Finding the left hip crease, or maybe the sacrum. One more deep round of breath, really using the exhale to twist, releasing any stagnant air from the body. And then the right hand comes back underneath the shoulder to help press into the ground. And we meet back at center, taking one round of breath to re-neutralize. Awesome. This time we bring the knees right underneath the hips, tuck the toes, and we're setting up for downward facing dog. I'll meet you there on your exhale. And you can continue pedaling out the feet or maybe finding stillness. And we'll go ahead and bend the knees, drop the heels over to the left, and then really start to pull the right hip back in space, opening up through the whole side body. Exhale, back through center. Knees stay bent as your heels fall over to the right. And the left hip pulls back in space. 
Exhale back to center, keeping the knees bent. We look up in between our hands and then jump or step forward to the top of the mat. Feet are hip width distance apart as you inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. As you inhale up again halfway, go ahead and plant your palms either at the top of your thighs or on the ground. And then really exhale, pull the navel in so that way you have more space to fold forward. Another inhale up halfway. Almost like you're finding a little bit of a cobra pose through the upper body, rolling the shoulders back and together. Exhale, folding forward. From here, you can start to interlace your fingers behind your back. Roll the shoulders together and then maybe find a little bit of a stretch. Hands come back behind the head. And then we'll start to release the hands, bend the knees, allow your torso to fall over your thighs and take hold of opposite elbows. So now we're taking the stretch out of our hamstrings and just letting the upper body swing and weigh heavy, decompressing the spine. Releasing the hands, we'll keep the knees bent as we start to roll up one vertebrae at a time. Meeting in our standing pose. And once you reach the top of your mountain, we'll go ahead and reach the hands up overhead. Take a deep reach up. And exhale, hands together in front of the heart. Lovely. From here, we'll go ahead and bring the big toes together, heels about an inch apart, and we'll come into our chair pose. So take an inhale, lift the heart into the thumbs, and then exhale, bend the knees, and instead of letting the knees come forward, try and sink your hips back as much as you can. Start to squeeze the knees and inner thighs together. Engage the low belly, and then maybe send your hips back a tiny bit more. You can keep your hands in front of the heart or maybe start to reach them straight out. This kind of reminds me of like driving a little bit because from Austin you have to drive quite a bit to get to Taos. But we'll take one more inhale and then exhale, find that forward fold. Straightening the legs, we inhale up halfway. Exhale, empty out the belly as you fold forward. Inhale up halfway and we step it back with the left leg into a long lunge. Drop the back knee, untuck the back toes and then start to pull the right hip back in space almost like you're squeezing your inner thighs together. Engage the low belly and with all of that strength from the ground we inhale Rising up on Janiyasana, saluting the sun. And if it feels okay for you, you can exhale and maybe fall a little bit deeper into the hips. Option to stay here, or if it feels good for your shoulders and heart, you can interlace the fingers again behind the back. Hug the shoulders, lift the heart in gaze as you stretch towards your back knee with your hands. Keeping the belly engaged, we exhale, release the hands, reframe the front foot, and then we're going to tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, awesome, and then come onto the fingertips so your torso is coming off of your front thigh. Great, continue hugging the hips together as you inhale up, high crescent lunge, and then exhale, plant your back foot, we land in warrior two. Lovely. Continue hugging the shoulders together. Your knee is stacked right over your ankle. Gazing out over your fingertips, wrapping the outer part of your right thigh underneath you for some support. Take a deep inhale in. Exhale, hands to your hips 
and we straighten the legs, turn all 10 toes towards the long edge of your mat. Great. So we're going to inhale, bring both hands overhead, creating a little bit of an A shape, hands come together. And then we exhale, hinge forward from the hip crease, like you're slicing forward. Nice. Find a spot for your hands to land. Continue hugging the outer edges of your booty together. Maybe walk the hands back in between the feet and you can start to fold forward, bringing more weight into the ball of your foot. Taking an inhale, walking the hands back underneath the shoulders. Left hand comes right underneath you in the center and we're taking that same twist here. So inhale, open up to the right and we exhale, thread underneath. Another inhale to reach. This time we stay and see if you can keep your hips level as you twist from the upper back. Exhale, hands come back down to center. The right will come and replace as we inhale, open to the left. Exhale, find a thread. Inhale to reach and stay. And just check in with the rest of your body. So see if your legs are still engaged, lifting from the kneecaps, twisting from the belly up the spine. Breathing in and exhale to come back to center. Walking the hands back to the top of the mat, we'll meet in that high crescent lunge, spiking the back heel. And then bring the foot in about a foot, so we're narrowing our stance. And now we're going to press the back foot down at an angle, finding a hip seal or foot seal. Inhale up halfway. And then we exhale, pyramid pose. So really allowing your right hip to come back as you exhale, finding that hamstring stretch, releasing the head and shoulders. And then we inhale up halfway and bend the front knee to step the feet together. Big toes together, heels an inch apart, squeeze the knees. We're bending, just like we did in chair pose. Reaching forward, chair pose. And then we inhale all the way up to reach. Exhale, hands together in front of the heart. <sighs> Lovely, second round. Inhale, reach. Nice big breath as you inhale. Exhale, chair pose. Allowing the shoulder blades to hug together. Deep inhale. Exhale, sink the hips. And we fold forward. Nice. Taking an inhale up halfway. Exhale, we step it back with the right foot. Nice long lunge. Drop the back knee and untuck the back toes. Squeeze the hips together. Find that buoyancy and strength as you inhale up to rise. Anjani Asana. <sighs> Option to sink the hips. Find a nice stretch in the psoas in the front of the hips. <sighs> Allowing yourself to really fill up with that prana life force energy with each breath. <sighs> Exhale, reframe the front foot. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. We're going to come up into our high crescent lunge, so prepare your legs for that strength to lift. And exhale, warrior two. So in warrior two, we have a nice foot seal with the back foot wrapping the left hip underneath. And even though your body is completely activated, right? There's a strength flowing through all parts of the body. Your gaze is still soft and focused. Whew. 
On your next inhale, we reach. Exhale, hands to the hips, turning all 10 toes to the long edge of your mat. Inhale, lift the heart. This time, instead of folding forward, we're going to turn the heels in, maybe walk the feet in just a bit, and find our goddess pose. Inhale, reach. Exhale, sink. Bending the knees in the same direction as the toes. Nice. And then we inhale, straighten the legs, coming into our star pose. Exhale, sink, coming into goddess pose. Inhale, star, and reach. So I'll turn towards you guys, and we'll just find a nice flow here. So exhale, dropping the hips. Inhale, reach. Should feel nice to connect your breath with your body. And last one here, we're going to hold, find a nice bowl with your hands, right? So almost like you're carrying some water in front of your hips. You can sway side to side if that feels good for your hips and joints. Awesome. Continue finding length through the low back. Awesome. And then we'll keep the bowl here, straightening through the legs. I'll join you. Inhale one more time, hands up overhead. Exhale, start to come back to the front of the mat. Finding that long crescent lunge. And then we narrow the stance, planting through the back foot, straightening both legs, left hip comes back. As you inhale, lift and exhale, fold. So allow yourself to breathe into your body where you need it most. Maybe it's the IT band or the hamstring. Maybe it's in the shoulders and the chest. So wherever you need to go, make sure you can still breathe. Taking an inhale to come up halfway, bend into the front knee, stepping the feet together. Inhale up. Exhale, bend the knees, hugging them in so everything squeezes toward the midline. Maybe lift your hands in front of you. Chair pose. Inhale, press into the feet to lift. Exhale, hands together in front of the heart. Lovely. So we'll do a few standing poses here. I'll face you guys. So we'll start with our beloved tree pose, bringing our weight into our left foot. And then you can start with a kickstand, so finding your right foot right at your ankle. Awesome. Another option is to bring your foot to your calf or all the way up. We just don't want the foot on our knee joint. So once you find a spot for your foot to land, go ahead and squeeze the foot into your leg. Hands can come back to the heart. Inhale, maybe start to branch out. Lovely. And there's a lot of wind today. You can maybe hear some wind chimes. And you can just enjoy that little dance through the trees. One more inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, bring the hands back together. And then we're going to step back behind us. So the right foot comes behind. And you're coming into a little bit of a curtsy pose. So your knees are stacked back behind one another. And we take an inhale and exhale, bow forward. Keeping the knees bent, we inhale, lift. Exhale, bow. In, reven in reverence to the elements and nature swirling all around us. And next inhale, we come all the way back up, feet together, hands to the heart. Take one breath to recenter. And as you open your eyes, find a drishti point to gaze your focus on. Weight comes into the right foot, 
Left foot comes up into your tree pose, hugging together, bringing the navel in and up, finding stability. And if you took your arms out to branch on the other side, find your own expression. So in a lot of these poses, there's kind of one big shape, right? So we find that stillness and there's a lot that we can learn from that as well. But I also like to find some moments where you can find your own expression, your own little tree shape. Test your balance. And as you're ready, we'll exhale, bring the hands back together. <sighs> Wrap your left foot back behind you. Find your curtsy. Inhale, lift the heart and arms. And we take three bows. <sighs> Cherishing each moment and then stepping together. One breath. Re-neutralize. Great. So we're going to do one last standing pose. We're coming into eagle pose. So coming into your left foot again, we'll start to bend the knees and then wrap your right leg on top of your left thigh. So option here is to just find a kickstand again, or you can maybe choose to wrap your ankle. So really important to bend both knees so you can squeeze the legs together. Awesome, left arm comes on top. You can give yourself a nice hug or maybe find a nice bind of your arms. Continuing to inhale, lift the heart, sink the hips, and then hug all of your limbs into one another. Inhale, release, and fly. Awesome. You can shake it out. We'll take eagle pose on the next side. So coming into the right foot, we'll bend the knees, cross for your eagle pose. So the higher you can cross on your thighs, the more you can find some leverage, great. And then the right arm comes on top. Awesome, great options. Squeezing in together. Keep breathing nice and strong. Next inhale, we fly away. Great, shake it out. Okay, from here, once we shake it out, we're gonna come back to the top of the mat if you're not there already, and find one more sequence. So we'll inhale, reach up, exhale. This time we swan dive forward. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, step back with the left foot. Inhale, find length, exhale, straighten through the front leg. So we have a bit of a wider stance. So this is a pyramid pose variation. And we'll inhale, bend into the front knee. Exhale, straighten and send it back. And last round, inhale to come forward. Exhale to send it back. This time, as we come forward, we bend into the front knee, and we're going to just take a straight cartwheel up and over to warrior two. Turning your back foot down. Finding your strength here. And then we're going to slice the left arm down and around, come into our high crescent lunge, hands together in front of the heart, option to stay here and you can maybe bend the back knee if that's better for your hips or we'll come into our flying eagle also known as warrior three so pressing into your front foot we start to hover the back leg this is a really great option here for your balance coming back or you can start to tilt forward letting the heart come down Flexing through your feet, nice and active. Maybe you bring your arms out into an airplane. Continue lifting from your left glute. 
One more inhale, and then we step it all the way back to that high lunge. Exhale, reframe the front foot. Leave the, back, leave the left hand down, and we'll turn towards our front leg. Option here to bring your hand behind your head. Start to press your head and weight into that hand. Finding a little bit of a diva back bend through the upper body. If you want to layer, you can also come onto the back edge of your back foot, heel toe your front foot to the center of your mat, and maybe reach your arm up and over, side plank variation. So really pressing into your feet and hands to lift through the hips. Exhale, breathe, plant through your hands. Step the feet back into plank pose. Exhale, you can drop through knees, chest and chin, or all the way down through chaturanga. We're coming to meet on our bellies. And I just think I saw an eagle fly over us, which is pretty awesome. Great, so from here, we'll slide our hands back by our low ribs. Elbows shoot towards the back of the mat. Press the tops of your feet into the mat and inhale, find your cobra pose. Exhale, bring it down. We'll inhale, lift, so really articulating through the spine. Exhale, return. Last round. Exhale, bring it back down. Lovely. Go ahead and bring the hands back underneath the shoulders and we'll come to meet in our plank pose. So you can take a reverse push up or come up through all fours. From this plank pose, we're going to send the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward and on your exhale, we'll step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, low belly comes into fold. And then using the strength of your legs, we come all the way up to stand. Exhale, hands together in front of the heart. Take a moment to breathe, maybe close the eyes and recenter. Lovely, we inhale, hands up. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, step it back to your long lunge with your right foot back, lifting the heart up off of the leg. And then we'll find that cartwheel up and over, warrior two. Gazing out nice and strong. This time we start to scoop the right hand down. Coming up into our high crescent lunge, hands come to the heart. Option to stay here with your back knee bent. This is quite a bit of work already. But you can also start to hinge forward, standing strong into your front leg. Right leg starts to float back behind you. And then to see where your body wants to go today. Maybe you hinge forward just a bit or see where you want to go today. Finding your warrior three, you can fly. Maybe you reach your arms straight forward. Whatever works for you. Again, finding that self-expression, letting the right hip drop. Deep inhale. Exhale, bend the knee, step it all the way back. We meet in our high crescent lunge and reframe both feet, or the front foot rather. Start to stretch your front leg nice and long, straightening it out, finding this wide variation of pyramid pose. We inhale up halfway and exhale to fold. If you wanted to take that nice cycle, we can inhale, bend into the front knee, 
exhale straighten it back so your choice if you want to add some fluidity or find stillness whatever your energetic body is calling for is good and right for you we'll meet with our front knee stacked over the top right hand stays nice and grounded as we twist to the front option to take that same pose hand behind the head as you twist and if you want to keep building we'll heel toe the front foot to the center of the mat come onto the back edge of the back foot and then find a nice side body stretch up and over really using the strength of your legs to press into the mat exhale hands come down we meet in plank pose lifting through the kneecaps engaging every part of your body towards the midline and we exhale all the way down plant the tops of the feet inhale cobra pose exhale roll down so we'll do a few more belly down back bends and we'll start by interlacing the hands behind the hips hugging the shoulders together inhale lift the heart maybe stretch the hands back behind you so no need to lock out through the elbows you can keep the elbows bent as you lift up and reach back exhale release and you can let go of your hands maybe shimmying the hips side to side release any low back tension and then we'll start to interlace the hands behind the head you're welcome to take any variation here that you would like then we'll start to inhale press your head into your hands to lift really using your back and core muscles here to lift and exhale fold forward releasing the hands last option here we're going to reach the hands straight out in front of us and then start to zipper your inner legs together we'll build on this approach so finding a little bit of a superman or superwoman inhale we reach up so similar to what we were doing in our chair pose reaching up and then maybe you take your zippered legs up as well finding a spot where you can still breathe as you inhale reach and lift and exhale down awesome you can stack your hands for your forehead to land on you can bend the knees and windshield wiper the feet side to side lovely so from here we'll go ahead and plant the palms underneath the shoulders and then press back into our child's pose so option to bring the knees out wide or you can keep the knees together and find more of a low back stretch continue breathing and if you have the knees together you can start to walk your hands back to take hold of your heels and then start to lift the hips coming onto the crown of the head into rabbit pose and this time your shoulder blades are stretching apart so see if you can really breathe into the back of the heart space one more inhale stretching out the back of the heart where we receive that love and abundance and exhale dropping the hips back down using your hands to help you come up to sit on top of your heels we'll do a little bit of a foot stretch so you can tuck your toes and sit back on your heels knees together and then we'll go ahead and bring the hands together lifting up and seeing if you can find this channel from earth to sky So using all of your muscles of your core to squeeze in like a tube of toothpaste as you reach up to the sky 
and we exhale. Let the hands come back down, cross the ankles, and we'll come onto a seat. Lovely. So we'll come to bring our right leg out to the long edge of our mat, and the left foot stays in. Great. If you have your blocks or your blankets, you can bring them on the inner edge of your leg, flexing the right toes up and back. And then the forearm reaches down and we reach up and over. So similar side body stretch. Really allowing the left hip to anchor down as you reach and then maybe start to twist your torso up towards the sky. We inhale, come up, plant the left hand back behind you, and we lift the hips into our stargazer pose. Exhale, we come back down and switch the legs. So this is kind of a Janushirsasana variation, head to knee pose. So normally we would do it with square hips, but we're opening up the hips here. Allow your forearm to reach down and help you find another connection to ground and find stability as you reach up and over. So in any of these shapes that we do, it's important to find stability and strength in order for maybe another part of our body to have the softness to open and stretch free. One more inhale, we reach up. Plant the right hand and then slice across the sky, coming into our sky gazer. Allowing your hips to come back down. Lovely. We'll move our props and then come to face the top of our mat, rolling back down, finding that nice hug. Maybe a gentle roll side to side. Great. We'll go ahead and take a bridge pose as we start to wind down on our way towards our final resting pose, Shavasana. So we'll plant our feet hip width distance apart, reach our hands towards our heels. And then as you're already on the ground, you can start to kind of tuck the shoulders underneath you already. Taking an inhale to press into your feet, lift the hips. Finding bridge pose, continuing to look straight up. So this can be a lot for the back, but we're gonna try and keep the low ribs knit into the core and use the strength of our legs to allow the hips to float a little bit higher towards the sky. And then exhale, articulate the spine as you roll all the way down, allowing the hips to land. Great, and then we're going to come into happy baby pose. So we bring our heels up towards the sky, bend the knees out wide, and then take hold of the outer edges of your feet. Lovely, and you can start to rock side to side if that feels good, or maybe you keep it sturdy here, allowing the sacrum to come down towards the ground. Feet press up as your hands press down. So a lot of inner energy coming together. Maybe you stretch one leg long and then the other. Whatever feels good to you here, you can find a bit of that playfulness again. One more inhale into where you need it most. Exhale, release the feet and you can bring the soles of the feet together on the way down coming into a reclined cobbler's pose, Supta Baddha Konasana. Allowing the hips to stay open. Knees can fall out to the sides. And then we'll start to stretch one leg out long and then the other, coming into Shavasana. So see if you can take up some space on the mat. Allowing the feet and arms to open out wide. 
and doing a quick body scan from head to toe, noticing all of the different parts of the back of your body that are in contact with the ground, with your mat, feeling that ultimate support from the ground. And if it helps you to embody that sense of groundedness, you can also start to visualize a root system from every point of your body in contact with the ground. Visualizing a root system that helps to connect you with the earth, connect you with the other trees and flora and fauna around you. into this ultimate sensation of oneness, of connectedness. Of ultimately being alive. With a bit of ease and grace, we'll start to return our awareness to this present moment, returning to all five senses, returning small movements into the body, maybe taking some circles with the ankles and wrists. Maybe just simply wiggling your fingers and toes. And bringing your awareness back to the breath. One hand over the heart, one hand over the belly. To return to that tactile sensation of the rise and fall of your breath through the body. And then rolling on to your favorite side of the body Allowing yourself to fully integrate your practice, your journey, the sensations, the thoughts, everything that came up along the way. And as you feel ready, you can use the top hand to help you come back up to that comfortable seat. Maybe sitting on top of a blanket. And you can keep the eyes closed. Bringing the palms together will regenerate that heat. And then interlace the thumbs, allowing the palms to fall in this eagle mudra right over the heart. And then we'll conclude with one final om in honor of this beautiful time and place. Taking an inhale to prepare. A full exhale out and an inhale to chant. Oh. Bring the hands together, thumbs to the third eye. 
And when we see the light and love within each other, we become one, not only with the people around us, but with the world around us as well. Namaste. Thank you all so much for joining me today. It was such a pleasure. So thank you, and I'll see you soon. Take care.